Okay. It's good to be with you, and truly, I am so honored to share what's on my heart with you today. And I want to thank my parents for entrusting me. You know, they pray about everything, and I want to thank them for being obedient to the Lord, because I promise you now, this message has been burning in my heart. I sat down to write it, and four hours later, it was done. And I knew that the Holy Spirit did it all. So he has something so specific for now, for each and every one of us, I'm including myself, because he really encouraged me. <laughs> so anyway, I want to welcome our online campus, everybody watching online. It's good to have you with us this morning. And I want to welcome my precious family. Thank you for watching. I'm going to pray real quick. You may stay seated, so don't, you don't have to move. Father God, we, I come into your presence in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just ask that you just speak through me so clearly your heart, because that's the only thing that matters. And I thank you, Father God. I'm just going to ask you for the gift of faith to be stirred in each and every one of us. I thank you, Father, that we have a supernatural gift of faith just to believe what your word says. And I thank you, Father God, that it'll bring life, it'll be transformation, and it'll bring a hundredfold return in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. I like the support. <laughs> uh, well, my family and I moved back to Texas. Yes, praise Jesus. I call it God's country, so we are happy to be back in God's country. I love everybody all over the place, but I love Texas. So I want to share, um, since we moved back to Texas, we have expanded our family just a little bit, uh, not with children, but with animals. So I want to introduce my animals to you from our key farm. Okay, so we have 14 chickens. They're, okay, so those are babies. So we have 14 chickens, they're much bigger now. And we have 14 ducks. Can you guys see? There's our baby ducks. Then we have the goats, the family picture. Three goats. That's Rosie, Hunter, and Ninja with Judah. And then we have Donkey, which his name is Donkey. There's Donkey, very original. And then we have our two dogs, Bentley and Lady. Bentley is this cutie, and Lady's back there. I, she is something else. I love her, uh, but definitely something else. Okay, I want to share a quick story real quick. So we let our kids, okay, well, apparently there's different types of chickens, you know? There's different types. So we let our children choose the type of chicken that they wanted, chickens, uh, we thought this would be a good way for them to have ownership. That was the plan. But, um, so they chose their chickens. And a few weeks later, Judah, my four-year-old son, comes running into my room with, and he says, Mommy, lady, you saw the little dog, killed my chicken. She shredded it, and it's all over the garage. Uh, so this caught me by surprise. I said, what? I'm like, now processing. I said, tell me again. He said, mommy, with an even more like intense look on his face. Lady killed my chicken. She shredded it, and it's all over the garage. Like, what don't you understand about what I just said to you? So I said, okay, I'm coming. So I rushed to the garage, and he was right. His chicken was shredded all over the garage. Now, the day before, Ava, she's our oldest, she is so creative, so crafty, and just anything she touches, she can create. She had made Judah a bright orange yellow chicken out of cardboard. <laughs> and that was now in a million pieces all over our garage floor. <laughs> Oh, I see. but to him, it might as well have been his little chicken. <laughs> oh, I, I was so relieved. <laughs> I'm going to come back to that story later on in my message. Many scholars consider Hebrews 11 the hall of faith. It's where we see ordinary people do impossible things for God, because they believed. 
let's take a look at this. Hebrews 11, you can open your Bibles or follow along with me. It's going to be a little bit of a read. But we're going to do a good study right now. Okay? Hebrews 11, 1, we there? If not, let's just follow on the screen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Notice it says, faith is now, not tomorrow, but in this moment. We have to believe. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, divinely warned of things yet not seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Imagine becoming heir of righteousness. Isn't that amazing? By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out, which he would receive an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. That takes faith. I'm just going to step out and not know where I'm going, but obey God. By faith, he dwelt in that land. If God calls you somewhere, you've got to stay there by faith. Amen? That's what, that's what he did. As in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of the same promise. Our family members are heirs of our promises from God too. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker are God. By faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive a seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful. Family, she judged God faithful. I want to judge God faithful. He will come through. Therefore, from one man, as him good as dead, were born as many as the stars in the sky, in, new, in multitude, innumerable, as a sand on the seashore. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when tested, offered up Isaac, as he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concludes that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received. So he was like, okay, God, you gave me my son, and if you're calling me to give him up, you can raise him back, because there's promise in the seed. Amen? By faith, okay, let's go back here. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, he blessed his sons of Joseph and worshiped leaning on his staff. He gave them a blessing by faith. He said, you will, and he blessed them. That was done in faith, but his sons believed. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, he said, take my bones with you when you leave Egypt. Because he believed the promise that God was going to deliver them. He said, I don't want my bones here. You better take me with you. Because God is going to deliver the children of Israel. By faith, Moses, when he was born, his parents said, this is an unusually beautiful child. We're not going to let them see him. So they hid Moses. They didn't fear the king. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, he said, I'm not going to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I'm rather going to suffer with the people of God than enjoy the passing of sin, the pleasures of sin. It's, it goes so quickly, for family. It's not worth it. So he esteemed the reproach of Christ is Christ's greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked for his reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, and he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured. Let us endure seeing the one who is invisible, family. 
By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, whereas the Egyptians were drowned. Imagine if you and I were there at the Red Sea. We, we, they had to walk there by faith, looking at the water, saying, okay, God's got this. They walked by faith, believing that the sea wouldn't drown them. The Egyptians didn't have the same outcome. There was no faith involved. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they were encircled by seven days. By faith, Harlot, the Rahab, did not perish with those who did not believe because she received the spies in peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell you about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jepheth. And what about David and Samuel and all the prophets? who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became vigilant in battle, and put the armies to flight, and women received their dead back to life. Amen? Okay, they were ordinary people. They were ordinary people who did impossible things for God because they believed. Sometimes the thought has crossed my mind, like, were these people just like superhuman? Did they just have the gift of faith because they were in the Bible? But no, they were like, they were like us. They were like us. We have to know that. They were just fully convinced that God would do what he said he would do, and they believed. So we can trust God the same way and see the kind of miracles in our lives. Since God did it then, he will do it again. Let's turn to Mark 10, verse 27. You have to see this for yourself. Jesus looked at them intently. So he was really focused. Imagine Jesus looking at you very intently, saying, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. He didn't leave out things. Jesus said, everything, everything is possible with God. And that is the title of my message. Impossible is possible with God. I'm not sure what you're facing right now and what you are believing God for. But I want to tell you, we serve a big God who can handle your big dream and see you through any challenge. Do you believe that? So Matthew 7 verse 8 says, thank you, for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks the door is opened. This is a promise from God. He said, I'm here for you. Come to me. Let's look at Peter. Peter is one of Jesus' very first disciples. So Peter walks on water. Humanly impossible. But with God, it's possible. So what gave Peter the desire to ask Jesus to call him to himself. Have you thought about that? He's like, you're on the water, I'm here. I want to walk on the water. Jesus, call me to you. Like, where did he come up with that? Well, Peter, I believe a series of events took place that led him to that point. So Jesus, Peter had witnessed the following. You ready? Jesus healed a man with leprosy, the Romans officer's servant was healed. Peter's mother-in-law was healed of her high fever. That same night, demons came out of people. Jesus healed the sick. Then when they were on the boat, the storms were coming, and Jesus says, enough of you. Behave. Two possessed men were healed, and the demons went into the pigs. A paralyzed man was healed. A girl was brought back from life, from death to life. And Jesus healed a woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. 
and then a blind man was healed. All these things are impossible, but with God, they're possible. That is enough to get anyone's faith activated. Amen? Because he had witnessed the impossible become possible. All these miracles, they must have been on his mind. So family, Peter's miracle was in motion as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. He was walking in his miracle on the water. But the minute he took his eyes off Jesus, we all know what happened, right? So we know that Jesus is the Word of God. And that's how we keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. While walking in our impossible family, we keep our eyes on the Word. Amen. Now, we all have some major challenges. Or did I, is it just me, or do we all face some challenges? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm in the right place. This has been rough, but I've been trusting God. So He is so faithful. But I want to tell you, If you, how, are some of you trusting God for your future? And you say, you know, this is impossible. While we believe God's word is true, the devil will come and lie to us about it. Right? He says things like, God doesn't do miracles like that anymore. You're going to fail and everybody's going to see what a loser you are. You don't have what it takes. And your dream is too big for a small person like yourself. According to some research out of Queen's University in Canada, the average person has more than, no, the average person has 6,000 thoughts come across their mind a day. Women, we're slightly higher than average, so we have more than 6,000 thoughts a day. The shocker is that 80% of those thoughts are negative. While we might not have control of what comes into our minds, I'm here to tell you, we have control of what stays. Amen? Christy Wright says, our minds are multi-million dollar real estate. Protect it. We have to speak to our minds. We have to tell ourselves what is true. Our hearts will believe anything we tell it. Let's not agree with wrong thoughts. They're lies of the devil. And I'm going to prove it. Let's turn to John 8 verse 44. So right here, Jesus is talking about the devil. And he says, he was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. He doesn't have any truth. And when he lies, it's consistent with his character. For he is a liar. And Jesus went even further. He said, you know what? He's not only a liar, but he is the father of lies. So when the devil puts those negative thoughts in your mind... You immediately have to recognize the opposite is true. Why? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. What is the opposite of something that's true? A lie or false? So the opposite of something that's false or a lie is what? Okay, so it's black and white. We all agree. So if Satan says you're a loser, you know you're not a loser. What he is actually doing is exposing the truth. Because he can't tell the truth. So the opposite is true. So if he comes to you, you say, okay, I got you. I'm on to you. You just told me the truth right now. You just told me I'm super smart. I am successful. I am going to make it because Christ is in me. You call him out on it. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to get discouraged. He's going to leave. He's going to say, oh, this is not working. I'm going to go bother somebody else that's going to give in. He's wasting his time with you. Don't let the devil lie to you. You flip the switch on him and tell him, mm-mm, no. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I'm a preaching now. <laughs> Do it 
Amen. Okay. Remember my story about Judah and his chicken? Well, his chicken was shredded all over the garage, but it was not real. The devil will always make things seem bigger than they really are. We have to recognize that. We have to say, okay, it's not real. Yes, there is a chicken, but it's not real. Don't let the, the devil lie to you about something. That's why Jesus said in John 8 verse 32, and you will know the truth. It's up to us to know the truth, just saying. And the truth will set you free. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we need to know the word of God. And we will be set free from what? Lies, limitations, and being held back from what God has asked you to do. Making the devil nervous now. I love David for so many reasons, but a couple reasons I'm going to share with you. I love how David loves to worship the Lord because I find myself just getting lost with God all the time. I love, I love just spending time with the Lord, so I love David's heart. And the other thing is, I love, David was real. So I'm real with God. I'm going to tell him, hey, you know, this really was tough. This has really got me down right now. But I'm going to tell myself the good things too. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm struggling, but God in you, I know I can face any challenge. It's never like a sorry for me. It's like, okay, God, I'm just having a conversation with you, but I know who I serve. So David says in Psalms 103 verse 2, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. That is a key I want to share with you right now. The key is to remember, you have to remind yourself of the good things he has done for you. Amen. The devil tries to get you to think bad. Uh-uh, hang on a minute. I'm going to take you down memory lane. So Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith, right? I made my own hall of faith, you guys. I said, okay, devil. Here you have it. When I was 13 years of old, years old, <laughs> I was attacked and I was almost raped. And the devil told me in that moment, he said, you're going to be raped and you're going to be murdered in the left chair alone to die in the woods. That's what he told me. But I called on the name of Jesus. I literally shouted, Jesus! And I want to tell you, he let me go. He didn't know what hit him but the Spirit of the Lord. I want to tell you that Psalms 50, verse 14, 15 says, All that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved in their day of trouble. Amen. There's power. When my first husband left me, the devil told me, Oh, you're never going to marry again. And if you do marry again, guess what? He's not going to be faithful to you either. It's too late for you to have children. Look at you, you're getting on in age. By the time, if you ever, if you ever, you're too old then to have kids. You're going to be all alone. But God, he brought me my husband, his choice, Lance, and he blessed us with three amazing children. But God, family. When our daughter Ella was in ICU with a weird, rare bacteria infection, her skin was falling off with a touch. The devil told me that she would have scars all over her body and that she would lose her eyesight. L losing your eyesight is part of that bacterial infection. That can, that can happen. That picture was taken August the 7th, 2017. That was midweek because we were in ICU. So this was August the 7th. Look at her. Her eyes were shut. It was heartbreaking. Her skin, you can't, she's covered up now, but most of her skin had fallen off her body. But God, we walked out of ICU within a week. Her eyes perfectly healed and brand new skin. Look at this. This picture was taken August the 10th. From August the 7th to the 10th. That is a miracle. 
When we left the hospital, the nurses and the doctors said, because they had seen us worshiping God, and they had said, this is a miracle. This child has been healed by God. Don't tell me we don't serve a God that's living. It's too late. You can't come to me. Sorry. So Jerry Savelle, I'm going to share his story with you because I love it. Jerry Savelle tells a story about a time that he was trusting God for the impossible. He felt bombarded. Okay, so it's not only me. He felt bombarded by the devil's lies. So he flew to all Roberts University. Put the, please, put the university on the screen. So he flew to all Roberts University. Can you guys see it okay? And he rented a hotel room. And in the hotel room, he pulled up two chairs. He sat on one, and he said, okay, devil, you're sitting on the other one. Hey, man, he says, come take a seat. He said, you see this? He said, you said to all Roberts that this was impossible. I just, I just want you to look at this right now. You said it was impossible, but look what God did. Take a good look, Satan. He said, now I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to hear you tell me what God has told me to do is impossible. Because it's possible. And the Word of God says in Mark 10 verse 27, that is possible with God. So guess what? Jerusalem went on to achieve what God had told him to do. And he didn't hear any more about it. So when the devil tells you it's impossible, it's never going to happen, we need to remind him it is possible with God. Since God did it then, he will do it again. And I love Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33. It says, whatever we need, God will provide. Whatever we need, God will provide. Now, as long as it's in the Word, family, we can't go outside the parameters of the Word. But if it's in the Word, you can have it. Amen? So let's look at Daniel. I love Daniel too. And he is an excellent example for us. Daniel, he was a slave and in an unknown land and culture, but he knew who he was in God. Now you might find yourself in a situation that you didn't plan on being in, out of your circumstances, but family, we have to know who we are in God. He will get us through. Look, at, look what happened to Daniel. In Daniel 1 verse 17, it tells us that God gave these men an unusual aptitude for learning the literature and the science of the time. He also gave Daniel a unique ability to understand dreams and visions. God did this because it was necessary for Daniel's success. He didn't have it, but God gave it to him because God wanted him to be successful. We need to ask God for the tools that we need to be successful. If he's called you to do something, Say, Father, I need you to equip me right now. It's scriptural. Daniel needed all these things, and you gave it to Daniel. You wanted him to be successful. Okay, so I'm asking you now. I believe you've given me whatever you need, and he will do it for you. God did it for him. Just say, hey, you did it for Daniel. It's good for him. It's good for me. We should ask God, right? So now Daniel, I like this too because God will say, okay, I'll meet you where you're at but I want you to meet me too. So what did Daniel do? He was a wise steward. He studied. He said, okay, I've got the mind of Christ. I'm going to study. So you need, we need to do the things that we need to do. He studied diligently for three years. He didn't get discouraged. The Bible doesn't say anyway, Daniel got discouraged. And... No, he just said, okay, cool. I'm going to study. I'm going to do it. He studied for three years. And then... He stepped into his calling at the right time. Sometimes our preparation takes time, right? Galatians 6 verse 9 says, And let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season we will reap if, say if, we do not lose heart. The Bible says we will reap. But we've got to keep our heart right. 
We say, Lord, I believe. I believe you said you would do it. You're doing it. So we'd be diligent on our end, and God is faithful on His, okay? Amen? Amen. We need to remind ourselves that if it were possible, we wouldn't need God. We'd just get on with it, wouldn't we? But now when it's impossible, guess what? We need a God who specializes in the impossible. Amen? Amen. Remind yourself every time God came through for you. I remind myself, God, you came through for me then. You're faithful. You're good. I might have been worried about this. Make a wall of remembrance of answered prayers. I'm visual, so I need to see things. So make a wall if you have to. Put it in somewhere in your house. Don't be ashamed. God, you did this then. You answered this prayer. You came through for me, big or small. But God did it. And then you put your scriptures with it. Okay, God, you did it then. You're doing it now. We're together in this. What if what you wanted didn't happen? This does happen. I'm not going to tell you it doesn't. It does. So now what? Okay. God's solution might not look like your answer, but we need to trust Him. God's solution might not look like our answer, but we have to trust Him. Because time will reveal, you might not have it right away, but time, time will reveal God's grace and mercy in our lives. Because He will have something better. God doesn't take us backwards. He takes us forwards. So if we pray, God, I want your will in my life. God, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I actually believe Jesus was telling them, to call God's kingdom into their life. Because they said, how should we pray? And he said, pray your kingdom come, your will be life. Imagine, God, your kingdom come in my life, your will be done in my life. If we pray that, God, your will be done, guess what? His will is going to be done. And at the same time, he is going to protect you from the wrong. So we need to trust him. Amen. We need to trust him. It's not going to be worse. It's going to be better. Amen. And, in, in, and God tells us in Proverbs 3, trust the Lord with all your heart, leading not, what, to your own, you guys know, your own understanding. We can't reason it out with God. He already said, my ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, so don't even try. We're not even trying to reason it out with God. We just say, yes, okay, we're good. Whatever you say, I'm good with. And we move forward by keeping our eyes on Jesus, like Peter, as we walk in our miracle. We're walking in our miracle. We're keeping our eyes on Jesus because God is the same today as He was. He's the same yesterday, today as He was, and He'll be tomorrow. He doesn't change. And Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. It didn't say, my God shall supply all your needs according to your bank account, according to your job, according to your paycheck. It didn't say that. It says, my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. So you might all of a sudden have a bill reduced. And that happened to me. My $1,250 water bill was reduced to $140. Now, last month. That's God supplying my needs according to His riches and glory, right? So don't limit yourself to your paycheck. If He says He's going to take care of you supernaturally from His bank account, trust Him. Stand on this word. Remember, every time God was faithful, that literally fuels our faith by believing the word of God. Speaking the truth, God's word, to ourselves and that situation, make it the right environment for God to work out the impossible in our lives. He can work with us when we believe. I've been praying lately. You know, God, when, when I pray, he says, uh-oh, oh, I better listen. What is she going to say now? I, it's, it's interesting. 
But I said, okay. I said, Lord, so you, have, you said you have a book about me in heaven. So I'm just going to agree with you. What you. Whatever you wrote about me in heaven, I'm good with. So I'm just going to agree with you on that. That way, nothing can hinder me. Why? Because I'm coming in agreement with you. So I'm just going to walk forward in victory in every area of my life because I'm just agreeing with what you said. So now nothing's impossible for me. I'm like, Lord, you said it. I'm good with it. I can walk it out. That's how I've just, I just told that to the Lord. So I come into agreement with God. When we agree with God, nothing's impossible to him that believes. So what is, what is possible? Promotion. Complete health is possible. Debt free is possible. A healthy marriage is possible. Saved family is possible. God's side's dream is possible. A job is possible. If God did it in the past, He's going to do it now, and He can do it in the future. Amen? I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm getting, my throat's getting dry. So, last year, July, I had a dream from the Lord. And in the dream, a man brought my husband a brand new baby. I didn't recognize this man. I'd never seen him before in my life. But here was this brand new baby. Now, in the dream, we, apparently we were expecting a baby. I'm like, okay. But the baby was sooner than what we were expecting. So I woke up and I said, babe, I think the Lord... Well, no, I didn't think. I said, the Lord is giving you a new assignment. Something new is coming. So we prayed over it, and then we put it on the shelf. You know, you've got to get on with your life, but you, we prayed and we put it on the shelf, and let the Holy Spirit work it out. As we yield to Him, the Holy Spirit will work it out. So I didn't think twice about it. A few months went by. My husband was told, if you do not comply with the vaccine mandate, you're going to lose your job. He was considered a federal contractor. Well, neither Lance nor I had a peace about that. You've got to do, as a husband and wife, you've got to agree and have peace together and make decisions. So for us, we didn't have a peace about that. So he said, okay, God. We had a tough decision to make. We were facing a very difficult decision. They told him, come January of 2022, you will not have a job. We were facing the biggest mountain of our lives. And I think a lot of people were. <laughs> and so we got on the call with my dad and said, okay, dad, this is what's happening. Just want to let you know. And so he said, I just want to encourage you guys to fast and pray if you feel led of the Lord. We hung up the phone and my husband says, yes, I feel encouraged. I feel stirred up. I want to do a water only fast for four days. What? <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Okay, I don't mind fasting like mid to noon. <laughs> but I need my food. But, you know, the amazing wife that I am, <laughs> I said, okay, honey, listen, we're in this together. I'm going to do it with you. So we fasted, we prayed. God got me through, hallelujah. <laughs> and even our children worshipped and prayed with us. Now, they didn't fast, but they worshipped and they prayed and we did it as a family, it was truly beautiful. I know that our actions of complete faith and trusting God, demonstrated by how we responded to the situation, spoke more to them than anything we could have said. Because our actions spoke louder than the word, and my words. And I, my prayer is that what we show them by our deeds will set them up for the future. That they're going to remember what we went through and what God did. So Lance applied for the first job. It was a well-known Christian university. 
I'm not going to tell you the name because you would know it. And he became a top candidate. But they gave the job to someone else. We didn't understand. It was perfect. OK, we gathered up our enthusiasm. And he applied. This time, you'll never believe. His dream job. The door opened to his dream job. What are the chances? Christian, no mandate. He applied. And out of hundreds, literally hundreds of applicants, he made it to, he, it was him, and it came down to him and a woman, the top two. We're like, this is it. God's doing it. The, re, the director said it was neck and neck. And that they had the hardest time deciding. But after deliberating longer than they told them they would, because they couldn't come to a conclusion, they finally chose the woman. Oh my goodness. My husband was so devastated. But we had to trust God in that. Okay, God. I'm not going to lean on our own understanding right now because that's going to be really a downward slope. We're just going to trust you. So Lance made it to the finals of another job. Wow, Christian, amazing, university. And they gave it to the other guy. Three in a row. I mean, he was now almost a professional applicant. You know, what? It's December, and like Christmas is around the corner. And what does that mean? Presents, money. And he's not going to have a job in January. So one day, our kids decided, you know what? We're going to help mom and dad. They devised a plan. They went around the house, opened up every wallet, opened up every bag, got every piggy bank that they had. They emptied it out. And they came to us and they said, Mom and Dad, we've been thinking, and we want you to know that we're going to help you pay your bills. So here is all our money. <laughs> yeah, you can pay your bills. Oh my gosh. Firstly, like the Swedish children, their money wasn't going to make a dent in our bills. <laughs> their little piggy bank coins weren't going to make a dent. I was like, OK. Here's what we're going to do. Lance and I said, we're going to go ahead and give all this to God, like the five loaves and the two fishes, and we're going to say, Lord, you're going to multiply. So we gave all the money to God. We put it in the offering with their agreement that God was going to multiply their money from their piggy bank. A week later, my husband receives a text message from a friend who said him and his wife had something to give us. The husband met us at our home, and he handed us a card. He said that they had been trusting God for a significant amount of money, and that it came through. And he said while him and his wife were praying, they felt led of the Lord to bless us with something. He said the Lord told him to tell us that he, knew, he knows Christmas is around the corner, but he didn't want us to worry about Christmas presents for the kids. He literally told that to us. He said that God said, don't worry about presents for your kids. Here's the money, and don't worry about it. Don't worry about your money. Wow. Lance and I were shocked. So we prayed over the card. We prayed over our friend who had sown, thank the Lord, tears in our eyes. as we were so thankful for his obedience. So Lance and I actually held on to that card. We didn't want to open it. We wanted to open it with the kids because after all, this was their generosity that we prayed over. So when they came home from school, we said, guys, guess what? You gave your money. We asked God to multiply. Look what he did. And we opened the card together as a family. So now I'm here. Lance has the card. He's opening it. And then I see his face. I thought it would be like, happy. And I was like, I was like, oh, is it bad? <laughs> What's going on? I said, you okay? He goes, and he showed me the check. It was $2,500. What? 
Now, I know that's not a hundred fold, that's more like a thousand multiply fold. <laughs> but God did that a week later. Family, according to whose riches? His riches. In Jesus' name. Okay, we cried as a family. It was ugly. We cried. We praised God. We were like, thank you, Jesus. Of course, we tithed on the money, and we had an amazing Christmas. So then Lance applied to more jobs. Yay. <laughs> do, you, do you know he got two offers the same day? After being told no three times, Two universities the same day made him an offer. One was to a very well-known liberal university, which I will not tell you. And the other was a very well-known Christian Division III university. So after praying, Lon said, he said, you know, babe, I don't have a piece about the Division I secular space. He said, I, I really feel like God wants me to go in a Christian. I want to pastor these young women. I want to pour into them spiritually. And so that's really on my heart. And I don't want to just take this Division I, even though I would still stay in Division I. He said, I really feel like I need to turn it down. I said, okay, babe. If you feel like you need to do that, be obedient to the Lord. I said, then what about the other offer? He said, no, I'm not going to accept it just yet because I don't want it to be the backup plan. So he said, I'm going to decline this one first. He said, I, I'm not going to accept that job, not because I don't believe it's the right job. He said, but I'm not going to accept it yet because you've never been there. So he said, I can't move you to a place you've never seen. I said, baby, but you know I trust you. You've been there. I trust you. He said, I know you do, but I want you to be happy. I said, oh, wow, you're amazing. <laughs> so he called the director and he said, sir, I'm coming to town with my wife and my family and we're attending church because now it's not only the job that matters, the church matters too. So he said, we're attending this church. And the athletic director said, oh, great, that's the church that I go to. I'll meet you there. And then he says, and the president of the university will meet you there too. Okay. So we get to church early, and as we walk through the front doors, there is waiting for us the athletic director, his wife, his daughter, the president, and his daughter at the front door welcomed us into church. Family, amazing. You want to know something else? The man I saw in the dream that gave my husband the baby was the president of the university. Don't tell me we serve, that we don't serve a good God. What does the Bible say? The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So after accepting the job in Abilene at Hardin Simmons University, we were now back home and Ella was with me in the, the kitchen and we were preparing dinner and my husband was in the laundry room doing laundry and she said, mom, it was almost like urgent. She said, mommy, where's daddy? I said, I think he's in the laundry room. She said, I've got to go. And then she came back, I said, what was that all about? And she said, mommy, I just heard the Lord speak to me. I said, well, what did he say? And she said, the Lord told me to tell daddy that he made the right decision. Wow. So God gave Lance a choice. He said, you can choose Division I for the namesake, or you can choose me and follow me where I ask you to go. We follow God. And just like Abraham, he possessed his land in faith, we're staying in faith. Amen? Amen? There, Honestly, since our move, so many miracles have taken place. And I've run out of time to tell you them all. But maybe next time when I have the opportunity, God willing, I would share them with you. But 
Family, God literally worked out the impossible for us and he made it possible. Turn to the person next to you and say this, God says it's possible. Now I have two more very powerful testimonies for you. So turn your attention to the screen. I can have two strong men help me with this. Hi, I'm Corey Smelker, and I've been here at Christian Family Church pretty much since the beginning, uh, eight months after it started. And um, I worked for the Apostle Theo full time for several years, but a few years ago, I started working in a secular position. And twice in the last 15 months, I found myself on the wrong end of a buyout. And the second time that happened was in June of this year. And initially I was shocked, but then I realized nothing surprises God. But then I had to start looking for a new position. And this time I really wanted to be very picky and choosy about what position I took because I did not want to be part of another buyout in a year and find myself on the wrong end of it again. So my husband and I, Terry, and I came together in prayer and there were three scriptures that I stood on and I'm gonna share them quickly. The first one is 1 Corinthians 2.16. For we have the mind of Christ. And so when I started to pray, I said, I will know the will of God because I have the mind of Christ. And the second one is Galatians 6, 9. So let's not grow tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And the third one, very famous one, Psalm 37, 23. The Lord directs the, the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. And very soon, I actually had several job offers that came to me with the kind of work that I do. It's in high demand. And within a week, I had five very strong job offers. And I was in a bit of a quandary because now what do I choose? I don't have just a fork in the road. I have five forks in the road. And which one do I go for? And so I took what Apostle Theo teaches in his messages about how to find the peace and will of God in your life. And so this is what I believed. Put your emotions aside, wait for peace. Go through the role play of actually accepting the offer and again of rejecting the offer for each one of these opportunities. Then write down the reaction your heart has on paper and do it again. After you've had time in prayer, do it again and then you will be led by the Lord that way. And so I did that, and at the end of the day, I had a real peace about one particular job, which I accepted in July of this year. I started July 20th, and I say with absolute excitement that I am absolutely loving my job. My boss is born again, and that makes all the difference. Hi, family. My name is Yvonne, and I've been a member of Christian Family Church for 18 years. I've had the pleasure of serving alongside Apostle Theo and Dr. Bev since 2009. Last year, I was looking for a job, and at my age, I really had to stand on some scriptures to completely entice my faith. Two of my favorite scriptures is Mark 11:24, which says, Therefore, I say to you, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe you received it and you shall have it. My other scripture is Ephesians 3.20, which says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Those two scriptures were pertinent in my walk. So I presented my case before the Lord. The Father, I am a tither, therefore you also rebuke the devourer for my sake. Then. I also spoke more scripture because God's word does not return void without accomplishing what it was set forth to do. And that he watches over his word to perform it. God lines up people, places and things on your behalf that you do not see. So during that time, I spent time in the presence of the Lord. I prayed in the spirit and I worshiped the Lord. I thanked him for what he was doing behind the scenes that I could not see. Faith moves God. In the interim, I ended up getting a call for an interview. I went for the interview and as soon as I walked in, I felt at home. Less than three hours later, I received a second call to come in for another interview the following day. It was lovely. Our interview lasted almost three hours that second time. 
So two weeks went by, I had not heard from this company. Apostle Theo came up to me at church and said, Yvonne, the Lord spoke to me and said for you to write down what job you're looking for, the salary you're looking for, bring it to me and we're going to agree. And the Lord said, he's gonna give you a great job. I said, yes, sir. I ran across the church to get my tablet, wrote everything down, ran back across. We prayed in agreement. And days later, I got the call that I received that job. The job I received is my Ephesians 3.20 job. I wanted a job that has Jesus to the core. The owners of this company love the Lord. And their main goal for all of the employees is that we have a perfect family and work-life balance. They bless us with unlimited time off so we can spend time with our families, engage in Grandparents Day. We also have Bible studies. We also get to pray for each other and have our Bibles on our desk at work. It's wonderful that we can read the Word. Another thing is that they want us to see them as an extension of our church family. So family, God answered prayer. That was my Ephesians 3.20 gift from God. So he is faithful and good. Trust the Lord. Amen. Weren't those encouraging? Okay, so we're going to do something really quick. I'm going to ask Stacy to come up and sing a very powerful song. And while she's doing that, if you want me to agree with you for something that you're trusting the Lord for that is impossible, but you want a breakthrough, then I'm going to pray over you right now. So come quickly. And then on your way up, I want you to be thinking about what you're trusting the Lord for. And I'm going to come in agreement, but it must be within the word of God. I cannot believe with you for an ex-husband to come back because a sweet lady asked me that last night. And I said, well, here, what about this? We're going to pray God's will. And whatever that is, he will work with, okay? So I want to agree with you. If you want to come up right now during this song, I'm going to lay hands on you and we're just going to believe God together that the impossible will be possible. Amen? Amen. Come up quick. Okay, so I believe in the name of Jesus, I come in agreement that your impossible is possible. They say this mountain can be won. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like you do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is.
Yes, we do, Lord. Oh, we believe. Yes, we do. Yes. 